The Night Beat starts right now. The coronavirus crisis apparently leading to a critical shortage. Medical supplies like masks leading to a change in the fight for COVID-19, leading to do-it-yourselfers. Here at home, a nurse practitioner is asking neighbors to sew face masks for her office staff. So what does the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention say about that? The night team's Patty Santos explains. Nobody knows what to do, but this is the best thing we can do. It's a lesson in compassion, home economics, and current affairs. Somebody said, calling all sewers, and I am a sewer. So I said, let's do this, girls. Neighbors Tanya Taylor, Kim Gonzalez, and their kids are making cotton fabric face masks to help nurse practitioner Jill Folkert and her staff at Texas Oncology. We were told yesterday to come up with inventive ways of maybe making some homemade masks in case it gets really bad. The idea and directions came from this video posted on an Evansville, Indiana hospital website. With the worldwide supply shortage and medical protection, the Center for Disease Control and Prevention has said the use of homemade masks has has been approved. A few face masks in, their tasks got easier. We've gotten the hang of it and it really has been fairly simple. It really has. I mean, if our third, fourth, and seventh grade girls can do it yeah. with a little guidance, I think anybody can do it. Folker says she's trying to get ahead of the short supply. The masks will be used by staff in case they run out. We just all have to try and do our part to get through this um, the best that we can. After a few hours and 20 masks, the kids are feeling good about their project. If I don't do it, who is going to do it? Contact the hospital or medical facility that you want to donate these to to make sure that they accept them. We have posted a link to the instructions on our website, ksat.com. Patty Santos, KSAT 12 News. The number of, number of COVID-19 cases in San Antonio remains at 29, but there is a change in cases of community spread. Here's the latest. Some of the cases that were under investigation are now classified as community spread. There are eight community spread cases, 13 travel-related cases, and four people were infected through close contact with those travel-related cases. The causes of four cases are still under investigation. There are also zero deaths and one new case that was confirmed today in Bernie. It, tonight during the case at news at nine, I spoke with the local emergency room doctor about his concerns about testing and what people need to know about this virus, among other things. Dr. Robert Frolickstein says the Methodist ER has been preparing for COVID-19 for weeks now. And though patient numbers have been low so far, when it comes to testing in the ER, they have them available for patients admitted to the hospital. The doctor says if you are sick or believe you have COVID-19 symptoms, don't show up to the emergency room. Instead, follow these steps. See your personal physician, or if you don't have one, we do have the ability to see you via telemedicine. And if necessary, and if it makes sense, we can order or at least uh, refer you to the San Antonio Metropolitan Health District to, to get evaluated for testing. Yeah, again, you must have a doctor's order to get the test. The doctor also says to take social distancing seriously because it will flatten the curve of infected people, which in return will simply save lives. In new tonight, Governor Greg Abbott is pushing back the May 26th runoff elections from May 26th to July 14th. This is being done in an effort to combat the spread of COVID-19. Early voting for the runoff will now begin on July 6th. If you need a refresher of what will be on the ballot, go to ksat.com, click on the vote 2020 section under the news tab. Well, levels that could not be imagined. The San Antonio Food Bank using those words to describe the rise in requests for food assistance. They say they're sending out more than half a million dollars in food every day into the community, and it is still not enough. In a statement, they say, quote, we have moved to mobile grab and go distributions only to keep volunteers and staff as safe as possible as we meet the need. Seniors and kids are our main target, along with all the newly unemployed who may have never experienced life without a paycheck. End quote. You can help by visiting safoodbank.org. The coronavirus leading to restrictions for restaurants all over San Antonio and Bear County. A local businessman says it had already been a difficult past couple of weeks. Now his restaurant was targeted by burglars. 
San Antonio police are looking into it, but in the meantime, the owner of Toro Kitchen and Bar says he's just trying to move forward and focus on making sure his employees are taken care of during this uncertain time. Tiffany Huertas has the story. It was just very heartbreaking to see that. As news of the coronavirus has caused fear, Gerardo de Anda wanted to bring some positivity to his restaurant. So he posted this sign. Somebody to see that sign and to still want to break in was just amazing. Surveillance video shows the moment two people broke into the Toro kitchen and bar located near Loop 1604. When I went inside, I saw that there was a cash register over here by the bar, uh, just all, you know, torn up. And then I saw the uh, wine cellar uh, room open. Deanda says they took money and food. They stole a little bit of jamón serrano, uh, some cheese. We're just doing what we can to, to stay afloat and keep positive mindset. This area is usually filled with people on Fridays. The restaurant owner says while business is down because of the coronavirus, he hopes things change for the better soon. I mean, our sales went down, you know, 95%. Due to the coronavirus, city officials announced restaurants would be limited to carry out orders and deliveries. Deanda says while he's made several adjustments, he hasn't let go of any employees. We're going to do everything that we can as owners to get them paid up until uh, the payroll that we have, and then we're going to sort of switch uh, the hours and take turns uh, to make sure everybody uh, has some hours at least. The restaurant will stay open with curbside and delivery options. Deanda is trying to stay positive even through these difficult times. San Antonio is a, a great city and everybody always comes together and figure out a way to make it work. Tiffany Huertas, KSAT 12 News. We did reach out to the San Antonio Police Department. They tell us officers will continue to patrol their service areas and take appropriate action. If anyone sees any type of crime being committed, of course, call 911. HEB says it will now pay hourly employees more money. They're getting a $2 raise. The company says they're doing this to recognize how hard their employees have been working during the coronavirus pandemic. The company has also said a, they will set up a senior support line. It's a new delivery program that aims to support older customers. HEB is teaming up with the Favor app to take orders over the phone. People over the age of 60 can place orders by calling the number there on your screen, 1-833-397-0080. All the information is also on our website, ksat.com. And we've already heard of people losing their jobs because of the coronavirus. The Lily Pad Garden School had to furlough some staff and cut other staff members' hours by half. The San Antonio Zoo had to furlough a majority of its workers. We've also learned tonight that the La Quintera Resort and Spa will temporarily close resort operations effective today. In a statement, the resort says, quote, our loyal and dedicated associates are and have been the very soul of the resort. As such, the resort has pledged to continue to support and care for them through this temporary closure, end quote. The pandemic wreaking havoc on businesses across the world. And yesterday, the U.S. Department of Labor registered 281,000 unemployment claims. That's an increase of 70,000 from just the week before. Here at home, Workforce Solutions Alamo linking those in need with help. The night team's Garrett Berger speaks with San Antonio's mayor. You know, I think there is uh, there is going to be a shift in employment for a while because, you know, a lot of a, a lot of jobs are changing. Local leaders expecting workforce change ups as the COVID-19 pandemic forces people out of their current jobs and into uncertainty. The head of Workforce Solutions Alamo has said they've only received two layoff notices in the past two weeks, but are anticipating many more from large and small businesses in the future. We talked with a man at one of its centers and was laid off from his job as a standardized test scorer. As long as I'm working, I have some money in my pocket, I'm happy. While some jobs are disappearing, this whole situation has created a lot of demand in other sectors. HEB, Amazon, and Walmart have all announced plans to hire more employees, potentially providing what the CEO of Workforce Solutions Alamo referred to as survival jobs. Though they don't yet know if there will be enough jobs for all the people losing theirs. We do have active jobs, um, and we do have uh, the database within uh, Work in Texas. So we would encourage all folks to come to our uh, center or call us so that we can figure out a plan to be able to have that transition. Now, Alamo Workforce Solutions says that they want to protect their employees, too. So if you are feeling sick, don't come in. They say they can still help you. Just reach out by the phone or online. We have information on how on our website, ksat.com. Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News. 
Well, by now you've probably heard the term flattening the curve when it comes to the new coronavirus. The number of confirmed COVID-19 cases continues to change. RJ Marquez explains what flattening the curve means and why it's critical to our health care system. It's part of a series called Understand, which airs on the news at 9. <laughs> When it comes to the novel coronavirus, one of the biggest uncertainties is how much faster it will spread in the U.S. This is where flattening the curve comes in. The speed of the outbreak is critical to combating the disease, which is why mass gatherings have been canceled, schools have been closed, and we have been asked to stay at home if possible. It's all in an effort to do what's known as social distancing. If there is a massive spike in cases, experts say it will overwhelm our healthcare system. More people will die because there won't be enough hospital beds and ventilators to keep them alive. The curve takes into account the daily number of cases and the capacity of our healthcare system. If we do not social distance and take preventative measures, the daily outbreak peak will explode. If we act now and take precautions, the peak could flatten out over time. Yes, simply slowing the spread of COVID-19 extends its time, but it would prevent flooding the healthcare system, which is more of an urgent concern. Hospitals would be better equipped to treat several people over an extended period of time, as opposed to a rush of patients in a shorter period. Keep in mind, flattening the curve does not essentially reduce the number of overall cases we will see, but health experts say the goal is not so much about preventing illness, but rather slowing down the rate at which people get sick. This could save lives. Even if you're young and healthy or feeling okay, it's your job to social distance to avoid spreading it to others and keep the pandemic in slow motion. I'm RJ Marcus. To see more stories like this, watch Case at News at 9, Monday through Friday. You still ahead on the night beat, the city of San Antonio dealing with more than 200 public buildings they have to sanitize. How they're getting that job done, coming up. And the coronavirus pushing back the tax deadline, but what about the 2020 census? The update on how many Texans have filled out the form and the three ways you can participate. And multiple states sending out stay-at-home orders, what the Texas Speaker of the House is saying tonight when it comes to our state. It's next on the Night Beat. In tonight, three states under stay-at-home orders. Illinois, New York, and joining California in the response to the coronavirus this way. The move is restricting movement for more than 70 million Americans in an effort to stop the spread of the coronavirus. And at midnight tonight, the Mexican border will join the northern border and close all but essential travel into and out of the United States. The undocumented will not be allowed to cross. President Donald Trump has said he does not think a federal lockdown will be needed. And questions of a statewide lockdown have been heard here in Texas. The Speaker of the Texas House of Representatives responding in a tweet saying, quote, it is false that Texas will be placed under lockdown or shelter in place on Monday or in the immediate future. Please help stop this misinformation. But we must follow CDC guidelines and the restrictions under Governor Abbott's executive order or we will face further restrictions. Under that order, restaurants are restricted to closing their dining areas and all non-essential businesses are closed. Social distancing is highly encouraged. The coronavirus pandemic is pushing the tax deadline back. Instead of April 15th, you'll have three extra months to file, file your taxes. The Treasury Secretary announced the new deadline is July 15th to get your taxes filed. And while you're at it, don't forget to fill out the census. The 2020 Census Bureau says everyone should have an invitation to complete the census in their mailbox by today. The census is used in the planning and funding of resources like hospitals, emergency emergency response plans and even school lunch programs. The coronavirus has led to field operations being suspended until April, so it is important you fill out the census online, by phone or by mail. So far, a little over 14% of the nation has filled out the census. In Texas, about 11% of residents in the state have filled out the document. Along with trying to count the nation's homeless, the Census Bureau is also trying to keep count of college students and the elderly impacted by the coronavirus. We're also actively working with colleges and universities to make sure students that have been temporarily sent home or sent away from their normal, normal camp plus living situation know how to be counted. We're working with administrators at nursing homes and other group quarters to ensure those residents are counted regardless of any quarantine situations. 
You can fill out the census by going to 2020census.gov. We also have a link on our website, ksat.com. The census is so important. I just got mine today. Yeah, be yeah. counted. Mm -hmm. Live cam outside, 56 degrees. And what kind of weekend is in store, Adam? A bit of a split weekend, but it does look like we'll have another indoor day tomorrow. So another damp and cloudy day, which you know is a good thing we could use the rainfall. This is our latest drought monitor, which was updated yesterday, but does not take into account the recent good soaking rain we just got. Now this is radar as of 6 p.m. yesterday, and you can see good widespread rainfall, especially in the areas where we need the rain the most south of Highway 90, south of a uh, I-10 here, especially along the coastal plain, Carnes County, and even the Catula area, Carrizo Springs. Yeah, that's where we really need it. And we got some decent rainfall and more is to come. Now look at the rainfall estimates since Wednesday. You see these hot spots where we had these really heavy downpours periodically. It's where we had over two inches of rain estimated and even measured in some cases. You get down into Atascosa County, and this is mostly from just last night. There's a, a radar estimate of about five inches just south of Pleasanton. Sometimes that data can be a little contaminated, uh, but anyway, it just go goes to show that there was at least some good rainfall, even 1604 on the south side, nearly three inches estimated by the radar. Same thing on the southeast side of town there along 1604. Currently, the radar showing a little bit of rain, some moderate showers right now, right along I-10, basically from 410 eastward just south of Marion. Marion, they're moving into your neck of the woods uh, as we speak. And this shower right here, basically Kirby moving its way into Windcrest. Your, your Windcrest, you're next up for this shower as it pushes northward. This is nothing major, just quick splash and dash. That's all we have out there right now. But this is actually something of importance. You see near Laredo and Corpus Christi, between those two cities, we have these little showers starting to develop. We're going to see a lot more of that activity start to come together through the morning tomorrow. All right, so overnight tonight, just a few more of those little isolated light showers. Not a big deal. Coming and going. By 7 a.m., most of that rain is going to start organizing south of San Antonio. Then we get later in the morning, midday, the noon hour, 1, 2 p.m., and it should start to come together and move into town and give us some widespread good soaking rainfall for a few hours. Again, that's late morning on into about the middle part of the afternoon. Looking like some good rainfall. At times it could be heavy and even have a little bit of lightning with it potentially as well, but we're not expecting anything uh, severe or no strong thunderstorms. It's just going to be some good rainfall. Overall, looks like we've got a pretty good potential for half inch to an inch on top of what we already got out there. And the farther north and northeast you are of downtown, the better your prospects are of some of that more soaking rain. So we're in the 50s right now. We've been in the 50s for a good portion of the day. It's cloudy. It's cool. 58 in Casterville, 52 in Holotus, Canyon Lake, Bulverde, 54. Del Rio's a little bit warmer at 66. They actually had a little bit of sunshine today, but look how temperatures stay way down tomorrow. 54 degrees for the afternoon high, and then we quickly rebound. By Sunday, we're back near 70, and then next week into the 80s. So 48 in the morning tomorrow, 54 by the afternoon, and notice the main bulk of the rain will be around the midday hours, late morning on into the mid-afternoon, but a cool day, not as much of a breeze out there. That's the nice thing. Then by Sunday, we salvage a little bit of late day sunshine back up near 70, and yes, you see that correctly. Wednesday, sunny and 90 degrees, the high temperature, well above our average of 75. Too early. Get ready. <laughs> it's too oh, early. Yeah, thanks so much, Adam. All right, so this guy just gets hired, hasn't even really met his team yet, and now there's going to be no spring game. Yeah, because Conference USA canceled all spring practices, and I'll tell you what, UTSA head football coach Jeff Trailer is certainly handling this in stride, but he knows he really needs to get his guys on the field. Plus, playing golf is helping some to cope with all of this craziness coming up. Sounds of football should be echoing around the practice fields at UTSA, but instead it's quiet. Spring football is officially no more in Conference USA because of the coronavirus pandemic. Yesterday, the league canceled formal and organized practice effective immediately. This hurts UTSA football and first year head coach Jeff Trailer, who needs to get his guys on the field. The Roadrunners are scheduled to start spring ball on Tuesday to kick off five weeks of work capping off at the spring game. Here's coach via FaceTime. I really expected that. Uh, we, we've been planning for this 
for about 10 days right now, honestly. So uh, our coaches, uh, we're going to try to get in contact with our kids, like I said, on our, our, our routine mm-hmm. uh, meetings. We're going to try to reach out to five Texas high school coaches every day just to make sure those guys are doing okay. Maybe get some ideas from them. Okay. And a lot of these players, that you know, we didn't recruit these players. So we're going to try to reach out to their parents, get to know them right now, see what we can do to help them, and just all be in communication and uh, all get through this thing together. Coach is using computers and video conferences to teach his guys the playbook. We'll have more with Coach Trailer in the upcoming days. Johnson Jaguars starting quarterback Ty Reasoner is working out the QB coach Yelva Noise. He gets ready for a senior season. Young man is focused and doing his best to stay in shape while things are shut down. Ty's final season in high school football will be different, though, now that Ron Ritterman left to become athletic director and head football coach at Alamo Heights. He's the only head football coach in Johnson history and a man Ty really looks up to. I'm happy for him. He's, he's, he's a great coach, great guy. Um, but I know somebody's going to step up, um, take the spot, and I'm excited for my senior year. Um, I know me and my teammates are excited, and you know I'm grateful for all the coaches for everything they've done for me. University of Wyoming quarterback Levi Williams also working out with Coach Vinoy during his extended spring break. Back on December 31st, Levi made his first collegiate start in the Arizona Bowl and was awesome, leading the Cowboys to a 38-17 win versus Georgia State. And he made a play that showed off his toughness. Late second quarter, while buying time, Levi gets hit as he throws. The blow knocked him out of bounds and into the bench. He completed his pass to Aiden Eberhardt and was good for a 51-yard touchdown, a play Levi unfortunately missed at the end. It's third down, something needed to happen, and um, nothing was really happening downfield, so I decided to move out to the pocket right and look back inside to see if somebody was coming across, and nobody was, and then finally my outside receiver on the right side had come back down, so I threw it. I didn't see the guy coming to hit me, so when I got hit, I got launched out of bounds, and I, I hit the bench, and that kind of hurt, but... Um, <laughs> Uh, once the crowd go- went crazy, I was like, okay, so he caught it. And then they like kept getting louder and louder, and I was like, okay, what's going on? So I went on the field, and turns out he had scored. So, yeah, it was pretty cool. Winning makes things feel better. The Smith Valley alone finished the Arizona Bowl with 287 combined yards and four total touchdowns. Coming up next, playing golf is helping some to feel like nothing has changed. The coronavirus has affected the ability to play sports at all levels, even recreationally, and opportunities to enjoy our favorite pastimes in person have been severely limited. However, golf might be one of the lone exceptions. Case at 12's Jessica Hunt has more. Golf is one of the few recreational activities still open due to the nature of the sport. It's played outside and social distancing is easily enforced. That's the beauty of golf and the reason that I think golf courses are going to be okay amidst the struggle of the coronavirus is that everyone keeps a safe distance from one another. Uh, It's the perfect opportunity to socially disengage from your normal crowd. I've been trying to work on this golf game and my golf swing, so it's one thing I can do by myself, me, myself, and I, and it's not glamorous. I'd rather be doing lots of things, but... Hey, let's try to make the best of it. With many staying home from work and school to reduce the spread of COVID-19, the golf courses around San Antonio have provided a much needed outlet for the community. Golf in San Antonio and other communities has been good. Been good as a stress release and an outlet to get out and kind of act like everything's are normal. Like most businesses, the clubs have ramped up their disinfecting routine and players themselves are also making changes to stay safe. I think everybody's just cautious, you know, handshakes, those kind of things were a little different there, but, you know, golf golf, and can get past that, and they know that we've instituted extra measures to make sure carts and equipment are disinfected and those things. Patrons are grateful for the opportunity to just keep playing. Kind of forget, try to forget what's going on and enjoy a round of golf. It's fun to be out here. It means a lot to us to be able to get out. Reporting from the Quarry Golf Course, Jessica Hunt, KSAT 12 Sports. Thank you very much, Jessica. And I say weather permitting, grip it and rip it. Yeah, absolutely. Get out there. Yeah, thanks, Larry. You got it. Our coronavirus coverage continues. It's a big job, but the city is tackling the issue of sanitizing all its public buildings. How it's done, coming up. And President Donald Trump invoking the Defense Production Act, what it will mean as the U.S. responds to the coronavirus. And with the family practicing social distancing at home this weekend, anxieties can rise. The techniques you can use to calm nerves. Next on the night.
Working from home was a first for many this week, and with closures in effect, parents find themselves spending more time with their kids. Many are even taking on the role as teachers. The night team, Stephen Cavazos, with how some parents are adjusting to the change and the support they're now seeing during an anxious time. But I think everyone understands that right now we're in trying times, and all you can do is the best that you can do. Lauren Gampos says her life was turned upside down in a matter of days. Gampos is now working remotely from home where she and her two children have been practicing social distancing. My husband and I have been trying to do our best to just keep them in the house, let them play in the backyard. The family haven't shown any symptoms related to the virus, but Gampos says it's been an adjustment. Her husband serves as an instructor for the U.S. Army and because of his job is not always present. Gampos says the last few days have been a juggling act. Empty playgrounds and empty classrooms. More parents like Campos are now teaching their students from home. But for other parents, they say it's something they're already used to. I really didn't know what I was doing, and I was terrified that I was going to ruin their lives. <laughs> Ashley McGee has been homeschooling her four children for the last 10 years. McGee reminds parents who are new to homeschooling that each child learns differently. She also says it's important not to pressure yourself to be perfect. You cannot prepare yourself or try to be the school system because you're only one person. Ashley Jesse, a licensed counselor and program director at Paloma Place, agrees. She suggests developing a routine that works for the entire family and during times of stress to practice breathing techniques and recognize when you need help. Parents, I think, are being really hard on themselves right now, trying to have this very strict, structured schedule. She suggests developing a routine that works for the entire family and during times of stress to practice breathing techniques and recognize when you need help. We can't control what's happening with this virus, but we can control um, taking care of ourselves mentally and physically. That was Stephen Cavazos reporting. To other news now, with more than 200 public buildings to maintain, city workers are going above and beyond when it comes to keeping them sanitized. San Antonio Building and Equipment Services staff tripling down to keep the remaining open public spaces free of bacteria. More than 80 workers sanitizing entryways, door handles, all open surfaces. The director says it's an all-day task now. Our facilities are sanitized in the morning, they're sanitized again in the afternoon and in the evening. We go through deep cleaning of all those facilities and we're doing that on a daily basis and we haven't stopped since we initiated the, we, we raised the level of cleanliness about two or three weeks ago. There are two shifts for the workers and each wear personal protective gear while they're on duty. The coronavirus is putting some distance between local veterans and their VA therapists. And as some San Antonio vets tell Dylan Collier, it's a risky move that they're not happy about. People arriving at the Frank M. Tejeda VA outpatient clinic were painfully reminded today of the surging COVID-19 pandemic. Patients who come here or to the Audie L. Murphy VA Medical Center for Mental Health Care have been asked to begin taking part in what the VA calls telemental health appointments using the VA's Video Connect app, which this vet says lacks an important personal touch. If somebody's really in crisis, they need to speak to somebody in person, especially if they're suffering from severe PTSD. But this veteran says the system works for him for the most part, with the exception of a few glitches. Veterans we spoke to have compared it to a FaceTime call, which begs the question, is that type of interaction enough? One VA source says no. A mental health professional who spoke with us on the condition of anonymity said the telemental system recently worked for only two of his six daily appointments. Asked about the temporary policy, Dr. Nicole Breda, Associate Chief of Staff for Mental Health, told us this will enable the veteran to see their provider through this crisis. If the veteran does not have access to this technology, then the visit will be converted to a phone visit. The move to online or even phone appointments comes during a period of isolation greater than what most Americans have experienced in their lifetime. According to the VA's own statistics, more than 6,000 veterans took their own life each year between 2008 and 2017. Uh, what's going on right now is not to compare to what a lot of them have been through. Dylan Collier, KSAT 12 News. VA, VA officials encourage any veteran experiencing a crisis to call 1-800-273-8255, then press 1, 
or go to the nearest emergency room. VS suspending fares for the rest of the month starting tomorrow. That includes fare for fixed route bus services via trans trips and its on demand service via link. The goal is to limit interactions during boarding to prevent the spread of germs. The VA is also asking riders to practice social distancing, like sitting six feet away from other passengers. They're also asking people to follow CDC guidelines for washing hands, sneezing and coughing. The mandatory closure of dining in restaurants and of non-essential non businesses by cities and municipalities around Bear County is getting some pushback. Leon Valley's police department says they've been trying to work with businesses who want to remain open. The city approved a local disaster declaration restricting certain activities at businesses to mirror the declaration by San Antonio and the Texas governor. The penalties for anyone who does not comply will go into effect tomorrow. But the police chief says they have issued warnings to some businesses and made waivers for others so those businesses can continue to operate but still comply with the ordinance. It's for the safety of, of everybody, um, not just the people that are coming into those places, but of the workers themselves. Uh, the less amount of people that we can have in an establishment in confined spaces at one time, the better we all are. The San Antonio Police Department and Bear County Sheriff's Office says they have not received any complaints of businesses not following their declaration. On well, coast to coast, drastic efforts underway in an effort to curb the spread of COVID-19. From a need for ventilators to surgical masks, the challenges keep mounting, even doctors facing infection. Tonight, the number of infected passing at 19,200, according to Johns Hopkins, as so many Americans wonder what's next. ABC's Mark Stewart has the latest from New York. Life in the U.S. is quickly changing as one in five residents in several states are ordered to stay inside as the coronavirus pandemic intensifies, including in America's biggest city, New York City. We are now the epicenter of this crisis. The governor of New York joining California and other states in issuing new mandates beginning Sunday, ordering all non-essential workers to stay home, telling residents to stay indoors as much as possible and only leave to get food, medicine or solid exercise. Essential services have to continue to function. Grocery stores need food. Pharmacies need drugs. From first responders to families, no one is immune from the impact. I am very nervous, just feeling like when is this all going to end? Even with precautions, this New York City doctor tested positive. I was using all the protection I was supposed to. I probably just wiped the surface with my hands and then wiped my face between mask usage. Friday, President Trump announcing he's invoked the Korean War era Defense Production Act, directing American companies that can, including automakers, to now manufacture masks, gowns, gloves and ventilators. And in New Orleans, we get a look inside Oxner Medical Center, where teams are using special respirator masks for protection, as world health doctors urge young people to take the threat seriously. The Centers for Disease Control says nearly 40% of the people hospitalized in the U.S. are between the ages of 20 and 54. I just want to let everyone know that, you know, it's very important to stay inside and follow the CDC guidelines. Also, a malaria drug being tested as a possible treatment for COVID-19, drawing a sharp rebuke from one of the president's Impressed top health advisors. Nice. I agree with the doctor what he said. May work, may not work. Uh, I feel good about it. That's all it is, just a feeling. It might be effective. You're also collecting data that will ultimately show that it is truly effective and safe under the conditions of COVID-19. Even though people living in several states are being told to stay at home, President Trump is still insisting he is not considering such measures nationwide. Mark Stewart, ABC News, New York. And here at home, the San Antonio Area Foundation joining forces with multiple partners to help San Antonio overcome this outbreak. Here's a list of partners participating in the COVID-19 response fund. The money raised will go to local nonprofits to be used how they see fit to assist those in need. All nonprofits need to do is just apply and organizers say money has money was being donated as we speak. Over 2.7 million has already been raised. So the fund already has nearly $3 million and more caring businesses foundations and philanthropic partners are joining every single day in the effort. Nonprofits can apply to receive funding right now. Just text HELP 
SATX to 41444. Each nonprofit could get a grant anywhere between $5,000 to $50,000. Well, a night beat update on the plan involving the Pearl and local farmers. Curbside pickup helped customers get their produce today. Hundreds of customers put in about 400 orders getting produce from vendors who usually work the Pearl Farmers Market. This is how we can keep our restaurants, our farmers, our small businesses alive during this really challenging time. And you can come here really safely, get this wonderful food into your home. The curbside service is set to continue as we continue to practice social distancing and more local vendors will be included each week. We'll have a link to the website you can, so you can place an order. Just visit ksat.com. They'll be taking orders until Wednesday. Going to the grocery stores come with challenges, but a musician hoping to lift shoppers' spirits. Hear the mariachi music that filled one H-E-B store. I don't know if it was really mariachi music. It's just oh, good music. It's some good guitar. Yeah, yeah. it's coming up. And Kate said kids is adding activities for children. How to be a meteorologist at home. Coming up next. Well, hey, parents and kids. I know school is canceled and you may be stuck in a bit of a learning rut. We came up with a way for you to be a meteorologist in your own backyard. Meteorologist Sarah Spivey creating a cloud handbook that will help you ki help your kids identify which clouds are in the sky. You know, like cumulonimbus. It's my favorite <laughs> type I like of cloud. Say, I just like to say cumulonimbus. This is part of our new series, Be a Meteorologist from Home, to get that flow chart yourself and to see Sarah's demonstration. Head to our website, ksat.com. Just search under the Features tab and click KSAT Kids. Also on KSAT.com, we have a list of 20 websites to help keep kids busy and smart while school is still closed. These sites range for kids in grades from elementary to middle school. You'll find fun learning games, printable activities, and worksheets, and of course, lots of books to read. Each site is broken down by suggested age and a quick description of what's available. Well, the San Antonio Public Library, speaking of which, is closed until March 22nd. In the meantime, if you have a membership library card, you can access their digital library, which offers ebooks, movies, e magazines, and audiobooks. Right now, due dates will not apply and fines will not accrue. And two school districts vote unanimously to continue to pay employees despite recent school closures. South San ISD and Northeast ISD made that decision today. Some jobs in both school districts have been repurposed to help with to go meals and take home assignment packets. Board members express thanks to staff members who have adjusted their lives and stepped up as needed. It's just so important to us as a board that we're paying our employees. They are the reason that we are so successful as a district. And there are many employees that are hourly that if they're not at work, they would not be paid. Meetings in both districts will be held telephonically until further notice. They will also be streamed and saved online for those who can't watch live. Coming up next, the music that's trying to calm the COVID-19 chaos as customers shop for groceries. Going to the grocery store can have its share of stress under normal circumstances, but in the last couple of weeks, it's gone to a whole new level. A local musician is trying to help add some calm to the chaos. Photojournalist Robert Samaron has a story. I showed up Sunday and played and everybody loved it. The response was calming everybody down, relaxing, and I've been here ever since. Well, before he got here, everybody, they were rushing, and it was just, there's not really a word to describe how everybody was, oh, we need toilet paper, we need eggs, we need milk, and now that he's here, they're like, oh, it's music, it's nice to wait in the line. Some lady came up and said she'd had a panic attack, and then she heard the music, so that's what the importance is, how powerful music is to relax these people. Bye, guys. Every customer is telling me that they love George, and we love George. He's a regular here. How are you? I was at work, and I came. I was a little stressed out. I was in a rush. I came here. I heard the music. I felt nice. I'm forcing smiles out of people. <laughs> it soothes people's minds, keeps them calm, and people enjoy it. 
workers themselves have come up to me and said they love the music. The customers are enjoying it, and so that, that makes me enjoy it. We're uniting. I think the people are being united by music. When I was checking out, just, I just relaxed because of the music. He was wonderful. George is really a nice touch. Thank you. Now I want to know which H-E-B it was. Yeah. Yeah. We'll have to find that out. <laughs> By the way, I want to point out the Meals on Wheels. We had the uh, online uh, phone bank. Mm -hmm. They raised more than $40,000 for Meals on Wheels. That means every senior that they serve will get an emergency kit that can feed a senior for four days. Look at that, $40,000 $40,081. Thank you very much, all who participated and you just went above and beyond. That's why I love our Yes, viewers. we surpassed our goal. Great yeah, news. Yeah. Meantime, turning now to weather, 56 degrees out there, Adam. Yeah, I'm doing a little experiment here because uh, we're talking about the KSAT kids thing, the meteorologist for right. a day, and posted on KSAT.com slash thermometer are instructions on how to make a very basic thermometer at home with the kids. It's just a jar, okay? It's a mason jar, but I've got the instructions online and I'm putting it in hot water and then eventually you'll see the, ooh, there's the liquid, it's rising up, right? So in that, ooh, it's shooting up fast, see that? There it goes. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Fun the, to do with the kids. The very it, yeah. first time I saw that in the studio, I thought it was some weird drink of yours. Yeah, yeah, do not yeah. take a sip out of this. You can even seal off the end with glue. That's another good idea to keep the kids from being tempted to do so. Anyway, then you put it in hot water, cold water, and the thermal expansion of the alcohol teaches them how a, uh, how a thermometer works. All right, so uh, let's take a look at our dreaded pollen count that we have out there. I'm going to call that up here. There we go. All right, so oak is high again today. What we have... Moderate is mold. That's likely to stay in the air here just with the extra dampness we're going to be seeing. Uh, basically through the day tomorrow, it's going to be another uh, fairly, fairly damp day. All right, so we did have some decent rainfall across our area. And this is just over the past 48 hours. I mean, look at Atascosa County, really a good sweet spot there and parts of the hill country as well. We're going to add to our rainfall totals but mainly just tomorrow. I mean, we're talking a good soaking rain tomorrow. Right now, we have a few showers out there near Seguin. That's it, that's all we have to speak of at this time. Marion all the way over to Seguin and that I-10 corridor. Tomorrow, we'll wake up to just a few spotty sprinkles, but then late morning, through the mid-afternoon, that's when we're expecting the real rainfall to develop, move from the south to the north, and embedded within it, we'll have some pretty good downpours. So a rather damp day tomorrow, but we should get another half inch to an inch on top of what we already have. It's that north breeze that has cooled us down. I mean, our temperatures are down in the 50s. We're 56 degrees right now, and even cooler. Look at the panhandle, Amarillo at 35. So waking up to 48 degrees only in the mid 50s in the afternoon. Most of the rain late morning through the afternoon. Then I think we could salvage a little bit of sunshine as we get into late Sunday. And the next week we're looking at sunshine and 90. Mm -hmm. Wednesday. I'm I'm just thinking about <laughs> I, it. <laughs> I know it's that time, I guess we'll be right back. You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. Ed Oliver Bold singing about his girlfriend to his girlfriend. For seven days a week, nearly five years and counting, he's been his love's lifeline to the world. On this day, Mr. Bold braved the rain to make sure he showed he cared. His girlfriend is at an assisted living facility now, so he sang through a window. He eventually had to say goodbye, but promised to see her again soon. And we just want to give you another thank you. More than $40,081 is going to Meals on Wheels San Antonio, all thanks to the thousands of you who donated to the KSAT Community Phone Bank we had yesterday. With the money raised, Meals on Wheels will now be able to give each senior in its program an emergency food kit. The kids, the kits can feed a senior up to four days 5,000 seniors are part of this program, and now every one of them will have one of those meal kits. And with all that we're going through right now, mm -hmm. even before the coronavirus crisis, a lot of times the volunteers from Meals on Wheels were the only people that some of these seniors were seeing as they came to their house. So 
Thank you, San Antonio. Huge thank you. Surpassed our goal, and we just can't thank our viewers enough. We cannot. Adam, give us uh, our 50-50 weekend here. Yeah, well, tomorrow's the damp, rainy, and cold day in the 50s all day with some off and on areas of rain, especially right in the middle part of the day. So another day indoors with the indoor activities. Hey. Help, uh, help the kids make a little basic homemade thermometer. Get the directions, ksat.com slash thermometer. Then into Sunday, you can get back outside again. 68, mostly cloudy, and a slight chance of an isolated shower or so. But then we're back to 80 degrees on Monday, and then you look at that. Sunny and 90 by the middle part of next week. So we're looking at some real deal unseasonably warm air to move into town. We could get hit by another cold front by Friday or Saturday next week. So that's something we'll keep an eye on. You know, as I'm wiping down the uh, weather center, you can't see it because the camera's not on me. I just thought my cell phone has never been this clean in the history of cell phones <laughs> when, since, you know, this whole pandemic. Uh, you know, it's one of those things. New changes for us all. Thank yep. you, Adam. That's it for the Nightbeat. Nightline is up next. Good night.